please stand. The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, coming together as God's family, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Jim, can you open the doors? Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory for salvation with your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwellings of Jacob. He has torn down in his anger the fortresses of daughter Judah. He has brought to the ground in this honor her king and her princesses. On the ground in silence sit the old men of daughter Zion. They strew dust on their heads and girt themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. Worn out from weeping are my eyes. Within me all is in ferment. My gall is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. As child and infant faint away in the open spaces of the town. In vain they ask their mothers, where is the grain? As they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the city and breathe their last in their mother's arms. To what can I liken or compare you, O daughters of Israel? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for you false and spacious visions. They did not lay bear with guilt to avert your fate. They beheld for you in vision false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, moan, O daughter Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Let there be no respite for you, no repose for your eyes. Rise up, shrill in the night at the beginning of every watch. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him 
for the lives of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. The word of the Lord. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O oh God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pastors? Remember your flock, which you build up of old. It's a tribe you redeemed as your inheritance, Mount Zion, where you took up your abode. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Turn your steps toward the utter ruins, toward all the damage the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They are like men coming up with access to a clump of trees. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. With chisel and hammer, they hack all the paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire. The place where your name abides, they have raised and profaned. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Look to your covenant for the hiding places in the land, and the plains are of full of violence. May the humble not retire in confusion. May the afflicted and the poor praise your name. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant shall be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go as you have believed, let it be done for you. And at that very hour his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, the fever left her, and she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word and cured all the sick. To fulfill what had been said by, the, by Isaiah the prophet, he took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I was reading the news a few days ago and I saw, and Ashley was very satin, that a soup plantation had closed down. 
And I used to like to go to soup plantation because there was a buffet style and you could just go and pick what you wanted. And I was thinking of the soup plantation this morning before mass because the gospel just proclaimed is like a buffet. It has so much. It's so rich and there's so many different things that teach us about our relationship with God and God's love to us. But I wanted to focus this morning primarily on that line that we receive, recite every time we gather for celebration of the Eucharist. And in these days of COVID-19, many of us are reciting twice, which is that line where the centurion says to Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. I think that line is so important because our challenge is to realize that everything we do is not really our doing, but rather it's God's doing. That everything we do in our daily lives is because of the goodness, of the greatness of God's love for us. The challenge for us is to recognize that it is really his doing and not ours. If we pay attention to the scriptures, to the gospel this morning, it continues with a centurion saying, for I too am a man subject to authority. And scripture scholars all agree that when what the centurion is speaking about here is that even suffering is subject to God's, to Jesus' authority. And when Jesus commands the illness, the sickness to leave, it does. And so if we ask ourselves, well, why am I still sick? Why am I still struggling with something? I dare to say that one of the reasons is because many times we want to be in control. Because many times we want it to be our doing instead of God's doing. Many times we want to take over what is God's role. And so as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, in a few moments when we will say once again, Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof. May it be for us, my dear brothers and sisters, a reminder that everything we do and what we do is out of God's generosity. It's all God's doing. In his letters, St. John, and not the gospel, but in his letters, St. John speaks about this in a very beautiful way. He speaks about love, and he speaks about us recognizing that it was God who first loved us not we who first loved God. Meaning, my dear friends, again, it's all God's doing. It's all God's work. May we recognize that work in our lives each and every day. May we recognize every day that it is God who has called us, that it is God who has chosen us, that it is God who has invited us to go and to bear fruit. That it is God's work in us and not our own. May we ask the Lord to help us today to surrender to that will, to surrender to that work of Jesus Christ. That it is his doing because it is he who makes each and every one of us without exception worthy of his presence in our lives. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we pour out our hearts in the presence of the Lord as we offer our prayers today that the church may grow in numbers, holiness, and faith through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. 
that those in authority may be led by the word of God in the use of their power. Let us pray to the Lord that all who are ill and infirmed or suffering from any poverty or deprivation may receive the healing power of Christ and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord that all of us as a parish community may grow in the peace and love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they enjoy eternal rest in Christ's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the fathers who have been inscribed in our Father's Day Novena, and for those petitions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear the prayers we bring before you today and grant them in your mercy, for we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, dog who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of our mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. Please be seated. For those joining us at home, we invite you to please be united with us in these moments in which you're not able to be present by making a spiritual communion.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Please kneel.